Jamie. Yes. Chrysanth. You feel the thrum of an airship beneath your feet. You are standing amid a crowd of people, of other drow. The stink of sweat is all around you. You, The floor below you has this thick tempered glass panes that look down at the sun-soaked grasslands of Nujab, many hundreds of miles away from the city of Spire, from its great heights from which, at which you grew up, climbing up on architecture and getting a view. You like having a view, and in this moment, you've got that a little bit, um, <laughs> through a little bit of a square, looking down at a battlefield. There is an Elphir woman standing before you, who in this moment is maybe one of the most beautiful creatures you have ever seen. She's lifted into the air by arcane energy that crackles off of her, and she, in glowing jewelry, fills her with, with energy. Uh, she says, Children of Spire, you serve in the most glorious army ever assembled. The Her voice resonates through your bones. The soldiers around you cheer. Uh, Malthus stands at your left. Um, he grips your hand tight. He's breathing shallowly. His lips are pursed together. What does Malthus look like? Um, Malthus, he's... He's got this uh, just ink... For a drow, really, really dark, like obsidian skin, um, yeah. still wearing these kind of round glosses, even mm. as they're about to head into war. Uh, he's probably not smiling at the moment, but he gets these little dimples uh, as he smiles, and his pure white hair sort of falls in curls uh, down his face. But he's probably just sweating. Like, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, Chris like squeezes his hand uh, with re in reassurance and kind of yeah. uh, shoots shoots him a glance and raises his eyebrows in a sort of you, you good. Yeah, um, he he lifts up your hand, kisses it really like uh, you know, just like tenderly, um, and says, "You you think we can do this, right, Chris We we oh, we I, can do this. Yeah, yeah, we can do this. Yeah. Okay. Okay." We're getting out of this just fine, all right? And we're coming home, each of us, with six null ears, all right? Uh, yeah, great. Uh, yeah. Like, will you take both ear, like both ears off of each null? Like, so was it three nulls total, or uh, like one per? No. Like how? It's no, like one per. No, you want you want everyone different. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I mean, ears are like not that different from each other, or at least not in a way that like I particularly. Okay. Look. You, look. You, we're gonna. You're gonna kill six nulls, all right? And I'm gonna kill six, <laughs> and we're gonna be the best in this fucking platoon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, next to you, Ash leans her head down. She is. She's a very sort of youthful, like round face. She's like blue skinned, like straight up blue. Um, she's got uh, the you know her very sort of childlike features, like I said, rounded face. But her lips and eyes are like lascivious actively. She's like everything feels like an innuendo from her. Um, and she uh, she looks at you and says, six? Wow, that's uh, that's it. Interesting." Uh, oh, you you want you want more embers, huh? Oh, what, you think you're not going to do ten? <laughs> Have you seen them down there? Come on. Well, but yeah, I am trying to set a reasonable example for our boy here, okay? We can't be expecting him to just throw himself into the mix. You want 10? Right. I'll do 10. Here's, okay, uh, how about, here, here's the new the new deal. Whatever whatever you want with Malthus, you're great, you're wonderful, you do whatever you want. Um, for you, Chrysanth, whatever you do, I'll double it. <laughs> I'd I'd like to see you try. I'd like to see you try, Ash. <laughs> Fine. Um, and next to all of you is Meridian. Meridian is taller than all of you. He's pretty lean, um, like muscular, but not like brawny. Um, and he's uh, very gray, sort of slate gray, um, with his like hair pulled back, um, sort of little man bun. Um, he just looks at all of you. He doesn't say anything. He doesn't, he doesn't encourage. He doesn't do anything. Just sort of like gives you the side eye. Um, as uh, as you keep going on, um, Malthus uh, looks at you, Chris Anth, and he says, um, where's the door? How are we getting out onto the field?
uh, you you look around. The uh, the Elfir uh, general uh, calls out, uh, "Do you and you, your do your city and its rulers proud?" She looks right into your eyes as everybody cheers. What does Chrysanth feel in that moment? The cheers all around you. This Elfir general looking you right in the eyes. What do you feel? I feel he feels this rising excitement. Kind of the uh, you know. Well, just the the pre stepping out on stage, um, nerves kind of getting to you, and yeah. he he's feeling purpose. He's feeling like you know what this this I can do, this makes a difference. Yeah, and she and she's and she's gonna see it. She's gonna yeah. see what I can do. Yeah, absolutely. As you're doing that, the floor falls out from underneath you. The bottom of the airship. <laughs> Um, all of you, <laughs> yeah, full of you, you all tumble down through the air. You immediately feel the power of like sort of an arcane fog that has surrounded all of you. That's like you're still falling pretty fast, but you feel it as you get closer to the bottom, start to slow your fall to the point where like a lot of people will like fall and like, you know, it, it, not gracefully land, but you're able to land without pain about 300 feet uh, below you in the middle of these sort of grassy sand dunes of Nujab. Um, the Knoll's army is before you. You look up into the sky and hear these like, like strange sort of like whale song powers as um, the, um, as you see cannons going off behind you, these arcane cannons that are like, you know, 300 feet wide, firing these huge bolts of arcane energy um, that paint the sky uh, entirely blue with their plumes of enchanted fire. In return, like an orchestra in motion, the shamans of the gnolls let out their distant cries and tentacles of their toxic spells wriggle against the horizon. Um, you are suddenly in a mass of people sprinting downwards towards the fight, which is all shapeless and shifting as sand. Like people are trying to fight, but they're also trying to not fall over. Um, you try charge alongside your drow brethren, all dressed in the livery of that general who happens to own your durances. Um, so you are now, you are a member of the proud Spire army. Chrysanth, what do you look like? What are you wearing? And what is your fighting style as the gnolls come close? So um, I'm fairly tall and well-built, mm -hmm. uh, kind of a pretty easy going smile on my face got the, the the good looks of youth i assume i'm like seven, yeah. 18 like yeah, just sure. barely just barely old enough to join and uh the uniform i mean are we covered from the sun in now or are we the sun is down you have to be wearing something to protect yourself yeah yeah so kind of um draped in uh, underneath these like silks that I think are in this uh, kind of magenta uh, lined mm, cool. with um, a white kind of on the outside. Those are out outside of this leather armor that's underneath it, but it's sort of wrappings all around us. Yeah. yeah. Um, cool. And uh, Chris Anth, he's got... Um, a light gray skin it's kind mm. of looks almost textured um and yeah. um dark black hair yeah. that's sort of mid shoulder length cool. and kind of a wicked glint in his eyes in one hand he's got the army issue sword and in the other hand he should be holding the two hand but the other hand he's got a scythe which isn't um Standard issue. Yeah, standard issue. Cool. Yeah, and he kind of just likes to hook legs, pull them up, and uh, stab down with the sword. He, he, he two weapon fights, um, but he just likes to get people onto the ground or nulls. They're not people. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, just got him. Yeah, absolutely. So we haven't yet rolled any dice, uh, but I feel like with the complexity of war, I think it'd be kind of fun. So right. you don't yet have, let, let's say, because you're still just starting your endurance, you don't yet have the combat skill. Uh, what is it? Fight um, skill that your endurance would give you. Um, mm -hmm. So let's roll one die and then um, 
I think let's just, well, let's roll one and then let's give you mastery because of the courage and power that you have got before you. So that's two D10s. Um, okay. You're trying to roll higher than a six in order to succeed uh, generally at this at this combat. Okie okay. dokie, okay, okay. let's hope. Let's do it. better at this than blades. <laughs> Normally, yeah, yep, nine, that's a nine. I am better that's at this than blades. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Go away, Barrett. <laughs> Amazing. That is a clean success. You don't take any <laughs> any stress as you step through these knolls. These like hideous, stinking, hyena-faced monsters. These humanoid things with these big hunched backs. They've got these powerful weapons. Um, it's this moment of like the the music from you know the Pelennor Fields is like soaring da, 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 as you like charge into this thing, and suddenly as the first blow hits, the music is out. Um, it's just like this bloody thing, you watch one of your, uh, you, you watch a, a fellow soldier beheaded instantly by a by a null weapon. You see like a tentacle sprout from the ground and pull a shrieking drow into the earth where he splits in half and gets dragged down further in, spine leaking uh, blood onto the ground. It is gruesome. This is battle, this is war, it's terrible. You also see like three arrows from a, from a fellow drow soldier strike a null like, and he like falls gurgling blood um you uh s strike out with your sword and your sickle um you are you, you you take down your first knoll um in five seconds and uh you don't think yeah. to get an ear you uh you, you, you don't got the time for that right no. now <laughs> um did you have a, uh, later. It's fine. yeah i yeah. like just swap the sickle around to like a reverse grip and just like basically go down low cutting like achilles tendons uh, and then once they're on the floor, just yeah. into the neck, oh. into the clavicle, just yes. multiple stabs. Yeah, getting yeah. You remember covered the, in the blood. Yes, you remember the test things where all of you were just having to stab sandbags to know what it felt like to stab into something with a lot of a lot of uh, meat on it. Um, and so you've, uh, yeah, you you uh, you go in. Um, this is your first day, and uh, you kill three gnolls probably. Um, you see beside you. Let's see how everybody else does. Um, I'm gonna roll. <laughs> I'm gonna roll for Malthus. Um, that's an eight. Malthus does well. Um, hey. Yeah, Malthus succeeds. I think six and seven is a partial failure, but Malthus doesn't take anything. He's sort of defended by his friends, protected. Um, you see a seven from Ash, uh, who takes a hit from an arrow that grazes uh, her shoulder. Um, and let's see from our buddy uh, Meridian, who rolls a ten. Uh, he is a. Uh, the dude does pretty well. Um, he's he's also being cautious. He's not pushing himself too hard. He's not screaming. He's not shouting. Um, he 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 plays it plays it safe. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, we're in the middle of this this fight, this combat, and we're just gonna from the middle of it, boom, forward. This durance lasts four years, like all durances. Um, you fight for some time. You keep uh, you keep going at it. I'm going to ask a few questions to prompt you and then give you a couple scenarios. Yeah. Um, there are, so a lot of like your combat, you, you sort of shuffled around between all sorts of things. The combat is happening across this huge frontier. There are swamps, there are plains, there are some mountainous areas that all of it sort of barren and hot and, and terrible. There are fights that happen at night, fights that happen during the day, um, fights that happen under the cover of like toxic smog that the gnolls use to, to, to fill the place with, with, uh, you know, with confusion. You, there are camps that you stay at at night, sometimes inside an air, airship, but usually on the ground. Um, you and Ash and Malthus, what happens to that relationship? And when does it happen and how does it happen? Um, it happens kind of all at once, uh, I think. And sort of over the course of the first year uh, being together, er, in this yeah. Durance, uh, Malthus and Chrysanth share uh, kind of our tent buddies and the, they're just paired yeah. up together very often. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, just in the excitement after a particularly successful battle, there's uh, a kiss that happens between, mm. like, uh, I think yeah. Malthus grabs um, Chris yeah. and gives yeah. him a kiss. And, yeah. um, 
and he's like i know that this is like it it isn't even really in genre you know like i mean this is this battle thing but like i just you're just amazing it just, and it just yeah. reaches out and like continues the kiss yeah like you no know, don't, mm -hmm. don't need to no need to talk it's fine. <laughs> yeah. um and then with ash it kind of comes i think there's an instance where uh, Ash, Ash, like uh, Malthus got separated from uh, Chrysanth, and Ash saved his life one time mm -hmm. and yeah. got injured in the course of it. And yeah. kind of in Ash's way of being, having innuendos and kind of making jokes of things. Mm -hmm. Uh, while getting patched up, kind of is revealed, uh, taken off some of her clothing, and mm. just m sort of makes a move on Malthus, who mm. kind of surprised and uh, yeah. unsure goes along with it, and uh, they sort of slowly form this unit together, uh, with Malthus yeah. being the core. Because yeah, she's she basically says something of like, look, I don't wanna I don't wanna butt in, but I feel like I could, you know, contribute something to this. A, a small amount. You can contribute a small amount, all right? I appreciate your company. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right. All right. Don't, uh -huh. don't go getting ideas about stealing anything away, okay? <laughs> I couldn't dream of it. We're all together here, right? Um yeah. we got we got everything we need. Yeah, that's right. There's uh, other members of your squad. Um, I'm getting them, them in more flashbacks and thoughts and moments. There's probably a day where you, well, it's, uh, I'm going to smash this into a scene where you hear, sir, 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 careful, careful. This is a knoll on its back, screaming for its life. Its hand, had, you just cut off his hand. Um, you dragged him back to sort of this prisoner's, uh, not did, not a prisoner's area, but sort of the back of the line. Um, and it's speaking the only words that it knows in your language. Um, safe, friend, prisoner. Um, there's another another knoll uh, with them. Um, these, it's just the just you and these ones out here. And Malthus is probably nearby, sort of covering, like using maybe a, a rifle that uh, he's just been issued. Um, yeah, what do you do with these prisoners? Friend, you call me friend. Friend, friend. prisoner, friend. Friend, yeah, yeah. How many of my friends you people butchered, huh? How many drow you all dragged under the earth with your tentacles and your mages? Not, not our, our uh, not our, um, no. eh. and the other one goes, not our war. Not your war? It sure the fuck looks like your war. Yeah, and they're just like, one of them is like trying to like reach for a rock nearby, like maybe to lift it up and throw it at you. Try it. And he throws it at you. Uh, I don't know if I need it, but I would. You don't need to roll. You don't need to roll. Yeah. Immediately uh, try to take off the arm at the shoulder with the sword. Ooh, yeah. You feel it, it slices in like there's two. It takes two hacks, but it's pretty good. The sword, the sword sharp, um, and this like just shrieking in pain um, as the other uh, and and. You know, he, he's just like looking at the at the stump of his arm, uh, crying out in uh, in horror. Um, Malthus looks back at you, and the two of you meet eyes for a second. And he just there's a look of just terror and confusion in his eyes, um, not not of disapproval, just of terror. I'm okay. You missed. Good. Good. Um, Meridian, who's standing by, also with his own rifle, points the gun right at the head of the knoll whose arm you just shot up. Shoots it through the through the temple. Um, and looks to the other one and says, looks at you and says, I'll take the other one. Okay. Uh, fun. 
he uh, nods at you a little bit. Um, there are some moments when you see uh, Elfir. There might even be a moment where you report on a particularly unsuccessful battle. Um, one of your squad mates, Wexen, died during the during the fight, um, and you come to this big, beautiful tent. It is like floating up above the world. There's like a wooden platform on it. You come inside, the whole place is air conditioned uh, with like this beautiful sort of arcane energy. It's like frosty. Um, you come inside, you're able to take off your hat and the coverings that you've got on. Um, you've been promoted. Uh, you and Meridian are both there. Uh, and uh, you come before a group of drow who are not sitting at like a command table or looking at a map. They're eating a beautifully served lunch uh, catered by uh, servants and masks. Um, and uh, the the commander, the beautiful woman who you who originally commanded you, um, goes, "Oh, oh, <laughs> everyone, be quiet. They're here. They're here. We have to hear what they have to say." All right. Um, and she turns her chair to you. Greetings, soldiers. Uh, greetings. He's gonna go into a a low bow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, she says, "Ah, oh, yes, that's a good bit of formality. I wonder, were you um uh, one of the? This is another one who speaks. Of this. Were you this uh, formal and polite with the nose? <laughs> uh, I, I I like to go for politeness after I've removed limbs with the nose. Mm. You know, you can apologize to the dead, but uh, in the heat of things, they get a little." aggressive the um hmm. the dead yes uh one does often have concern for the dead but you did lose the bridge didn't you yes but we fought with everything we had My and was it was it sufficient was there something missing in your equipment your equipage was there, uh, and I, I'm just curious what what was insufficient. There's so many of them. We we keep throwing ourselves at them, but there's fewer and fewer of us each day, right? And they got their magic, and and then they got their teeth and their claws. But we can do it. Mm. I promise. You someone uh a, a like a young person this is like a young woman maybe f like 16. she goes don't the don't the don't they have some magic there, there, there are elves aren't don't they have something um and uh an, an older one says Shh, quite as about they they don't have nearly as much as we do it's a it's a strain for them it's quite difficult if if you could be so kind as to grant us some backup, some additional troops. We can fix this mistake. Grant some backup, they say. And there's a little bit of a laugh that sort of uh, ripples throughout the table. Um, let's let's roll on this. Let's just see. They might go for it. Okay. So you got you got a D10. Um, I don't think you got any mastery in this situation. <laughs> Probably not. Do you, uh, any skill you think would fit? Yeah, you, you you've got your. Yeah, I don't know if yeah. anything from your skills would fit. No, this this definitely isn't low society, and no. I wouldn't have religion as a. Not yet, no. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Nope, nope. I got none. Just, uh, <laughs> just one d ten. Yeah, roll, 50, let's see. Fifty percent chance. It's pretty good. All right, yeah. It's not. It's not. It's a three. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, they, uh, they say, okay, she, she, the, the general says, hmm, well, I'm afraid we don't get our next shipment of durances for <laughs> some time. Um, but this is what I can provide you. She steps up to you, gestures for you to stand up, reaches and touches your sternum with a single finger. As she holds on to her jewelry, which glows, you feel yourself fill with this like ravenous arcane energy that fills you. Your muscles become sort of super powered. You're, you can feel the blood in your brain. Like you, you suddenly have this like, you know, you know, enormous headache that's filling filling you and you, um, but you feel this like bloodlust and ravenous power. Uh, and she says, 
let's see what you do with that for a day. Um, Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, and you head out to battle. We don't need to roll anything on this. You are a force on the battlefield. Um, you you know kill probably thirty gnolls that day. Uh, there's this massive, massive thing. Everyone's with you, uh, fighting with you. People are terrified. Malthus looks at you in horror. You like feel this weird moment where your tongue is lolling out like like it's like a foot long and your teeth are sort of like canine and there's a moment where you see your reflection in the water and you are a null oh. like this I just, huge like yeah weird monstrous thing i just like whatever that thing of water is just splash it like yeah. scrape the ground out under it um and just put it out of mind and charge the next thing yeah, absolutely. You fight for a long time. Um, there's a point later in the day, the battle becomes lost. The, the Nulls retreat from the, the little spot you had. You didn't win back exactly what you wanted, but you got in a fight. Um, there's a point where they have to chain you down for a few hours um, because you're still so violent and so like sort of out of control. Um, and then you spend the rest of the night vomiting. Um, you like just this like horrific, like brutal, you're, you're, you're very, very sick. Um, and uh yeah, it's a it's a it's a bad time. Um, yeah, any like what any like scenes or moments that Chrysanth has after this with anybody? Do you think? I think, um, I think this might this could theoretically be the battle that he's. Uh... Oh no, I think... yeah, I love that. Oh no, unless, unless you don't want to. No, yeah, yeah, that he, that he gets injured in. Um, he kind of yeah. again doesn't doesn't realize it in the moment because of this transformation but yeah. he's you know he, he was giving as good as he got but he got swiped yeah. along the left hand side of his face and he's got claw marks that basically have it's almost entirely shredded off his ear and just ripped part of the scalp off on the left hand side and kind of as he shrunk back down it just started bleeding and bleeding yeah and yeah absolutely yeah, there's a point, like, for a day and a half, you, like, got this huge bandage around your head that's blocking your other eye, um, and you're just, yeah, you're totally... Um, did, yeah. did, is Malthus there that night? Oh, or, yeah. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah, like, just shaking, sort of, night sweats, um, not even holding Malthus's hand, but just, like, grabbing onto his shoulder, like, t oh. so tight that he's probably leaving, yeah. like, yeah. Not, not claw marks, but just nail marks yeah. in yeah. the shoulder uh, totally. over the course of the evening. Yeah, and Ash is coming coming around every few hours and like giving you like there's like a bucket of water she's tipping into your mouth. Um, but uh, it's it's Malthus who stays with you through the night. Um, and in the morning, oh no, a few days later, um, he says, "We were looking through. We went back, um, had to do salvage and see what equipment we could pick up." Um, I know I still only have five ears, but I did find this and brings you your earring with a bit of your ear on it. You keep it. This gets you to six. Hmm. Maybe, right. maybe keep the earring, not the ear. Yeah, he like to, clicks it open, pulls the thing out. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, I'm I'm better than okay. I, I I felt incredible up there. You saw I, I I practically turned the tide of that battle myself. You know? Chrysanth, you you weren't you. I that was I thought you were dead. I thought they turned you forever. I... Is that what you want? Not this, this, this is all I have. Okay? You and Ash in this fight. I'm not like you. I, I don't... I'm not well-bred. All right? I, I, I don't know what I'm going to do after this. I got to show them that I can be trusted, that I can do great things. Okay, you, you, you're so, 
you're so beautiful and you're so smart and talented and you can do anything. And what I can do is I can keep you alive and I can keep Ash alive and I can keep everyone else safe. That's what I can do. And if they got to turn me into one of these things, right? If I have to kill every single one of them, then okay, that's what I do. Okay. Another year passes. Um, I don't know. Any moments for Chris Santh? Any moments in the relationships that you feel like are significant sort of markers? Um, I think Chris Santh comes across like there are just like maybe two evenings that he, he stumbles across uh, Ash and Malthus mm. just sitting reading together, like mm. not discussing any tactics or battle or anything, but just like Malthus has a different book open and they're like, you know, uh, in a little nook somewhere in the camp. Yeah. And he sort of, he doesn't, he doesn't confront them when he sees them. He just sort of notices them spending this time without him. Yeah. And kind of goes back to the armory, finds yeah. finds his weapons, and just drills. Yeah. Yeah. There's a talk about security of information. Um, people talk about um, spies, worries about things, information being leaked to the gnolls. There's a couple things that go wrong nobody from the official hierarchy says it but it looks like people are wondering about it um one night you and meridian are up really late together uh, maybe ash and malthus are having one of their readings and you have a strange sight malthus has a sheaf of tied together papers on his lap on over his one knee he has a compass in the other he's holding and he's writing I can see this from where we're. Uh, You're both sitting at the fire. Yeah. Me and Meridian. Yep, just you and him. But we can wait. Meridian has the compass, or Malthus. Meridian has the compass and the paper. Okay. Malthus and Asher elsewhere. Yeah. Right. Try to look over, see what he's working on. He, as you're like trying to sort of sneak, he goes. Yeah. I thought you were tired. You seem to sleep. <laughs> no, um. I'll I'll sleep later. I uh I just need I, I don't know. I... You need to hydrate is what you need to do. You can barely drink any fucking water. Anything stronger around? You want this? He pulls out a jar of like fish guts and other stuff. He's like, "You want some chum?" <laughs> Meridian, you <laughs> you are full of surprises. You know that. Yeah. Ugh. Thousands of your way. <laughs> what? You planning out the fight for tomorrow? It's not your business. Okay. I'm just making conversation. Yeah, I know. I just don't worry about it. Uh, don't worry about it. Come on, look, we're in this together. All right. Look, I, I can help you. He stands up and walks away. And Thanks for the charm. Yeah, you're welcome. We flash forward, boom. Months pass again. The front moves up into swampland. The gnolls summon forth these huge construct of mud and swamp to battle you all, and, and this fog is just filling all the time. Um, we, uh, I want you to, uh, you and Ash get separated from Malthus and Meridian during a battle. 
I want you to make three rolls, and we're going to see if you can get to them uh, during this fight. So we're going to do three separate fights. You've got your fight now, um, so you get two dice. Okay. Um, so just give me three in a row and tell me what the results are. Three in a row. Uh, highest on each? Uh, three, three, one. What? Wait, wait, Chrysanth is good. Chrysanth can roll. I know, Chrysanth is good. Chrysanth can roll. No, this is a... <laughs> this is a fluke. This, this is just this narrative. Is, what this, this is, is is narrative perfection, is what this exactly. is. You this are is fighting good. through this. There's this huge swamp troll you have to fight through. There's this desperate moment. Um, Ash gets injured again. It feels like Ash is always getting injured. Um, you you head through, you're fighting, you're fighting, you're fighting. And finally through the fog, the last image you get, and this is the last image we'll have of the war, is Meridian stepping out with a severed head in his hand. And you see a pair of glasses hanging off of the face. Let's get the moment of your reaction to this. Uh, he just, it's like a white out, like the ringing in the ears. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the next thing he knows he's, he's dropped his weapon and I don't know if he can get to yeah. Meridian. Yeah. The fight is over now. But he's just claw, like fingers on the face, clawing, um, yeah. like pushed him into the ground, uh, yeah. trying to choke the life out of him. Yeah, yeah, Meridian is like fighting against you, pushing against you. Um, he's like, I found him, I found him. I. <laughs> what uh, happened? And... What do you fucking think happened? Oh. You're supposed to, you're supposed to protect him. You're supposed to protect him. We they, were already- They were supposed to protect us. He points up at the airship above you, at the, you know, the, the elf here up there above you. He says, we're nothing. We're nothing to them. Oh. You're nothing. Oh. You're nothing. Eventually he's able to tear away from you, roll away, um, staggers off. Oh. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, as soon as he's out of arm reach, arms reach, um, Chris Anth is just going to gather up Malthus's head, kind of adjust the glasses, and just kind of sit with the head in the lap. Yeah, yeah. There's just and there's a little bit of chaos of battle still happening around, but you're just sitting there. It's it, total. It, silence. It's, it's all yeah. It's all yeah. It, it's all faded away. It's not there. Yeah. And we're just going to snap to you sitting in a little dingy little flat up in the sky docks. You're back in Spire. It's this funny thing. You come home, you, you know, you were there for before the war. You didn't, you know, this was this place of peace, of walking around, of climbing. Suddenly the war is here. You see the violence everywhere. You see everybody hurt each other. You see bodies. You, it's like, it's like there was this whole secret world there that you didn't, see before um i don't want to rush you but give us a couple of important moments here of of chris Ant's journey so i think um i think chris Ant and ash um they try to open up a a bookshop uh yeah like a secondhand bookshop called chapter two uh yeah. and they mm. It kind of, it immediately, they're heavily in debt. They're making no money. Uh, neither yeah. of them is passionate about books. And they kind of, <laughs> they, 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 do, they do it out of a, out of a sense of obligation. But th the loss of uh, Malthus and just the stress of trying to do this, uh, they eventually, like, the sort of thing where it would be, they'd probably be able to maintain a friendship if they 
just immediately split up, but it's this slow thing where they're, they, they're trying to stay together and they eventually, like, just come to have this to really toxic, like, can hardly be in the same room with one another without just screaming. And the bookshop folds. Um, Chris yeah. goes and he, he, he can't bring himself to sign up to work for the city guard after the yeah. war, even though that's sort of, that's the standard, the go-to, the ideal career choice, but he, he doesn't, he, he can't serve them again. And yeah. he tries working as labor. He tries working kind of factories service yeah. and he's, he's just, he, he doesn't, he can't do it. He's terrible. Uh, no people's yeah. skills. You uh, you start seeing on the street something you also never saw when you were younger, which is these people with hyenas. Like just every once in a while, these people dressed in weird clothes. They got hyenas, and the first time you see it, it's like PTSD. Like this is this is like a knoll, this thing yeah. slathering before you, even dumber, even smaller. Hey, uh, first time you see someone with that, he's gonna. What yeah. the fuck? What the fuck are you doing with that thing? Um, yeah, this like scarred looking woman. This woman has like a prosthetic on her leg, not a not a very well made one, but still arcane and like gives her a lot of things. She's got scars all over her body, just like beat up woman, scraggly hair, curly. She she says, oh, "I'm a priest. Can't you tell?" No, I can't fucking tell. You're carrying around a fucking mini null, huh? Oh, oh, well, no, this, uh, my friend here, she's very kind. Illustria is her name. You want to say hello? The Nolsa looks at you. <laughs> keep, keep that thing the fuck away from me. Oh, come on, come on. She's nice. This is like a dog. This is like a little dog, but she's a sacred dog. Sacred my ass. She's going to walk away. Have you ever, she, as uh, yes, you walk away, he calls after you. Have you ever seen a corpse eaten? You know, like a body being eaten, like it it's like a sacrament, you know. Everything returns to everything else. Big fucking deal. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you come by sometime, she gives you the address of her church. Come by. Bring a corpse if you have one. Piss off. Yeah, she lets you go. Yeah. Does something bring you back ever? Um, I think the address is up mm -hmm. high, right? Yeah. Up high. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sky docks. Um, I think... Just... This is. I, mean, the thing. I can I I can drop a detail in here. Sorry, just one quick thing, is that she says when she's sort of barking like the hyena sort of growling at you a little bit. She says, "Just be aware, she is uh, she is pregnant. They're a little bit more temperamental that way. She's gonna have some babies." I think he's he's still angry at the idea of someone keeping this thing. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's the most, the most he's felt for a while. Like this, he, he's just been drifting and this, this pisses him off enough that, uh, one day he actually, uh, whatever, what, what's, what's, what's t one of the types of drugs that's going to, uh, make him a little reckless maybe. Um, Ambrosia is going to give you things. Kristen, how about you help us? You're our resident drug expert. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> you wrote down I all the drugs. Kristen, I mean, there, drugs. there are mushrooms, which are just hallucinogenics, but Blimmer gives you euphoria. What is it that you want? Daggers. Uh, reckless. Yeah, yeah I, I want to go fuck some shit up. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 
I think... I think Chrysanth is going to... Uh, just be looking at the address she gave him. Yeah. Uh, just sort of uh, takes the dagger and just this this is crazy. She is. She has this null creature. She's wandering around the streets and she says it's pregnant. So he's gonna it's gonna give birth to more of these things and they're gonna just they're gonna be everywhere. He's gonna have this constant reminder. He without even thinking he's walking by like a butcher shop just picks up a cleaver and he just stalks over to that temple um, and he's going to try to kill this hyena that he saw. Yeah. Yeah. He walks in, it's nighttime, uh, is able to get in, so like breaks a lock, not super subtle, comes inside, there's some barking. This woman, this priest is here on like this weird little bed in this creepy little church. Um, it looks like it was made out of the shell of some animal. Um, you, but you head back and the, the hyena is like, and there are a bunch of little puppies in there. Some of which are sleeping, some of which are sort of looking up at you. I'm gonna look at the closest one. Mm-hmm. Lift up the uh, lift up the cleaver. It looks at you, sort of like too young and naive to be threatened by a thing, and it sort of like <laughs> opens its eyes, and you see these little lines underneath its eyes, like spectacles. Gonna have to cleave her again. It's just gonna drop it and uh, kind of just holds a single hand out towards that mm-hmm. puppy. Yeah, the puppy sort of like gets up a little bit, like tries to get up on the thing and like heaves itself up. Um, manages to like lick your hand a little bit. I can't. I can't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about this. I can't. The puppy barks again. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You, uh, you need food? need uh that's that's nice um i'll go uh i'll I'll go get you some food uh lady hey lady Uh, she's uh she's sitting up on her little bed and looking at you she reaches, she looks down to her right, looks like there's this little altar, and there's just a bunch of meat <laughs> there, like a, in like a little mesh bag. She goes, here, take it. Yeah. Is this uh, a corpse? I mean, yeah. I mean, corpses are different things. There's some birds in there, in case you're desperate. Gonna reach in. It's like a, it. it's like a hand, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you wanna, you want a finger, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Here you go. Hey. Chews on it, like kneels with the bone a little bit. It's a little guy, so he sort of like chokes on a little bit. The mom kind of helps him out. Um, Eating a little bit of this, uh, uh, this finger. Um, is uh, do they have names? No, not the little ones yet. There are some priests uh, in training. Um, they see which ones take a liking to them. I don't think that one is going to anyone else, though. 
Definitely not now. Priests, huh? Have you ever considered a priesthood? Can't say I have. Hmm. It's, it might be a little bit more your style than most priesthoods. Oh, really? I'm not much of one for uh, prayer. No. She looks at the body, the, the, the bag of like body parts, and she says, there are certain rituals you seem uh, suited for. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Priest, huh? Yeah. People call us different things. Fuck it. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Um, there's probably a final little, like note on the epilogue, which is that just like a at your you're sitting with Malthus, your hyena, my hyena, um, who has now grown up a little bit, um, got a little bit of body on him, little like mangy little guy. Um, he's uh, just he's really t- going into some bones on the floor of your little flat um, when a letter comes by. Um, or you find one, it's like stuck in the door. It's been there for a while. Um, and all it just says is it's, um, got something you need to know, Ash. And that's the end. <laughs>